Hey guys, so you've seen a couple, just a couple, right? Of Momentum 397TH installs that he's done. So we thought we'd do something a little bit different. I hope you guys enjoy. Lee and I were talking and sure we do a good clean install and things like that and install a lot of power and you know we do the lighting and this and that and the other but what can you really do with one of these systems i mean how much power really is it so let's just look all right so we have uh inverter number one which is red on leg one uh, inverter number two which is blue on leg two solar red which is the front panels solar blue which is the rear panels and uh, we have a 712 right here and it displays up here um i think that's all and we got 2600 watts on the roof okay so um i'll just start going through it um red inverter leg one which is this one here so i'll click on it and we are off of shore power right now so this one is See, zero shore power coming in. It's generating 1.72 amps of AC power at 120 volts. It's drawing 11.4 amps. And the system voltage at the, the uh, MultiPlus is 13.98. So uh, remember this number. We're drawing 11 amps on leg one. Let's go to leg two. We'll go to the same screen. And we are barely making anything half an amp. It's drawing almost nothing. System voltage 14.14. Uh, Go up here to the battery monitor. So right now, there is 46 amps being pushed back. Sorry. 46 amps being pushed back into the batteries. So, and they are almost completely full. We have infinite time remaining. Um, there's zero amp hours uh, being drawn so it's it's in the 99 to 100 percent it's almost done charging uh, i've been off of shore power for a little while let me go back and then let's go to front solar which is this one and we are generating 30 amps for out of 452 watts it's generating 400 um 400 watts of solar is generating well it was it's both inverters switched over to absorption, actually right where we were talking. That means the batteries are almost completely full. So it backed off. Um, we need a heavy appliance to run. Let's, you wanna pause that? I'll get him to run something. All right, so sounds like he's gonna turn the convection oven on. Right. Okay, so. Uh, let's go to inverter. I don't know which leg he's going to be on. Uh, one amp on leg one. And he's actually also running the fireplace on high. So as you can see, even though it's, it's, it's water pump. Yeah. That's going to take too long. I'm going to shut the top spot on just a second. Okay. And yes, coffee pots do run oh. a lot, don't they? There we go. We just went up oh. six. Almost missed it. Okay, so there's the coffee pot being turned on. All right, so it's running seven amps. All right. Uh, oh, wait. I think it was this one. Yeah. So it takes 68 amps to generate 7.5 amps of AC power. So this is DC, that's the AC side. So 74, so it's bouncing a little bit. The numbers don't stay super still. But the cool thing is, is even though th that coffee pot is generating 60 amps, we're only drawing 12 amps off of the back. 12 amps on 15, 17. So it, it's fluctuating. But the cool thing is, is there is a private network the 712 has a private network that is connecting to both of the MPPTs and what this means is that when this right here this little network VE smart networking 
the it is putting out the battery voltage and battery current to the other devices connected on the network which is the front and rear solar so they both know that hey we're drawing lots of power so give me everything that you can give me so it's generating 32 amps for the rv it's drawing in 475 watts it slowly will build up and get the maximum that uh, can we are in northern florida it's about two o'clock in the afternoon um, out of 1300 watts with the goofy angle of the sun right now we're pulling in 470 so that's about 40 percent um, which is not terrible um, rear and one of the things that we get a lot of questions about after the fact is well why am i only pulling in you know this much um it's because your batteries are full right <laughs> so combine this network total power both systems that's what that means is it's displaying uh the total watts that are coming in from the roof 1012 watts total um, which means it's about 70 amps is what we're generating right now. So let's go back up here. So this, this draw on the battery should be dropping, but it's not, it's getting more. I think the, fern the uh, fireplace just kicked back on. So we're drawing 33 off of here. So this one is generating seven amps still it's drawing set almost 70. rear this one's still not drawing very much so they must both are they both on the same inverter they must be or same leg i mean same leg yeah, yeah. Right, so let's go back here and watch this yeah see we're only drawing 10 now so it's going to fluctuate as you know if if it gets it thanks if there's any shading um it uh, shading meaning like trees or clouds and stuff like that um you may not get optimal performance but um see something just changed it went up to 60. so let's go to this one like one let's see what this says we're drawing 12 now so I'm drawing 122 amps total off of this. I think this one's still gonna be quiet basically. Not draw much. Yeah, this one's not drawing anything. So that's there's the fan kicking on because it's it's generating so much power. So we're drawing 63 amps off of our batteries. If the sun were to stay exactly where it is, we could last 15 hours at our present what we're doing which is the uh, fireplace and the coffee pot running at the same time. Um, things that uh, generate heat normally take a whole lot of power um, to, to run. And um, yeah, see we're back up at 60 again. But even though this, the systems are pretty, it's, it's a lot of power packed into the, the you know, small space. Do you have the water heater on? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. But I bet you the convection oven just kicked on too. Gotcha. Oh, the convection. You got to start it and it's like preheating the oven. Why yeah. is it um, overloading? We're drawing, we're making 23 amps. It's drawing 280 amps off of the batteries. When the convection oven hits heat. Turn the water heater off. real close to peak. Did you change that? And there it went. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's probably the coffee pot. Just shut it off. Okay, but we're still at 17. Is your water heater still, was it still on electric? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, it's probably what it is. That, the fireplace? That and the fireplace yeah. and the coffee pot. So I had too much running at once. Yep. So that's what we know we can run. <laughs> so I think the temperature sensor on your 
fireplace kick back on. I can go shut the fireplace off and see what happens. Yep. It was pulling 11. The fireplace was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a good test. Because <laughs> I mean, I had everything running like I would normally run into shore power, and I didn't even think about it when you killed the power. No, I I knew, but I just I wanted to see if they would overlap. Um, as long as we don't go above twenty three, twenty four amps on an individual leg, you're fine. When you go over that, that's when you hit your overload. And um, if you would have gone much more, if something else would have kicked on. Um, it would have probably shut itself down, waited a few seconds, then turned back on. Okay. Just so you know, that's what happens when right. it goes into overload. But yeah, see, our draw is down to like 13, 12, um, negative still, so it's still drawing out of the battery bank. It's not replenishing yet. Uh, let's see what our solar is doing. 750 watts. So, yeah, we're still drawing in 800 watts. Um, our uh, angle of the sun, it is, it it's is great. not great. No, I mean, it's not. It's got to be like maybe 45, 50 degrees up in the air instead of 90. Yeah, I won't see anywhere close to what we got on the roof until summertime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, if you were parked at a very steep angle, you'd have a better chance, but not until That's then. not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, don't roll over in the bed. We'll fall over. <laughs> <laughs> See, remember that, that point when you said um, we're going to be collecting more solar than we'll, that's right now? Yep. So as long as this is not a negative number, you're at a surplus. It's putting a teeny bit back into the batteries. Gotcha. So now that it's done drawing all the power, the system knows... Uh, the MPPT is talking to the 712. It knows that hey, we, I still need as much as you can give me because I'm not at 100%. Yes, and then we're back up to negative again. Yeah. And there's all kinds of shit going on. I mean, not a not the big things, but there's still things that are on in there. The lights are on. Yep. Some lights are on. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's kind of a, a quick power tutorial on, you know, how it, it's all going to work. And the performance of it is, is the main thing. Yes, it's pretty, but um, it, it performs. So um, if, if you get near overload and you stay there too long, um, either this will shut itself down or this, which is a 300 amp auto resetting um, uh, circuit breaker that will shut off the power coming to the inverter and then it'll reset and then you can keep going because um, at our max we were drawing 280 almost 290 amps from the battery bank running through all of this to get here so it was close <laughs> so this can surge and this will allow it to surge too um, this can surge up to 6,000 watts, but only for uh, just a few seconds, like maybe right. 10 seconds or something like that. Right. Um, I think that this would probably shut off before 10 seconds if you're pulling that much power through it. That's like 560 amps, roughly. So it would only handle that many amps for a few seconds.
Oh, okay, good. You're live. I'm live. All right, cool. <laughs> Are the dry campers, Leanne and Mike. We make you feel pampered or solar power you'd like. We'll install lithium and panels up on top. No more.